Welcome back to another virtual story time. As a reminder, we will be ending these videos at the end of May. But until that, we have lots of stories to go. So keep on joining us. This week, we are continuing with our flower theme with The Flower Ball, written and illustrated by Sigrid Laub and Silk Leffler. Let's get started. Tonight, proclaimed Cauliflower, I shall attend the Flower Ball. Who would like to come along? Onion crinkled in dismay. The Flower ball? But what about our vegetable bunch? That's much more fun. You should stick with your own kind, Lettuce scolded. Everything has its place, and this is where you belong. Do you think that's true? Hmm. I don't think so. Proper vegetables never look past their own fence, chirped the radishes. Cucumber nodded sagely in agreement. Beware the flowers across the garden border, she warned. They're snobby and snooty and look down their noses at us. Those stuck-up vase stuffers. <gasps> oh, no. Better to have anything to do with them snapped the peas, shaking and rattling inside their paws. Those fancy pansies, those fluff puffs, those ornamental dandies. What do all of you have against flowers? sighed Cauliflower. Sadly, I'd like to go to their ball, but I don't dare go alone. I don't have anything against flowers. They just look different, and sometimes they don't smell as good as we do, Carrot sighed. For a moment, she was silent. Then she made a decision. You know what? She declared with trembling tuber. I'll go with you. Magnificent, cauliflower spruce up his leaves and topped off his outfit with an airy feather. While Carrot donned a beautiful mask. You look so nice, the two of you, whispered the radishes, suddenly embarrassed by their own red cheeks. Cauliflower puffed out his chest and offered Carrot his strong right arm. May I have the pleasure, mademoiselle? She gave a cheerful nod and together they skipped lightly out of the vegetable patch. The ball was already in full swing. The flowers had asked the roosters, the chickens, and the pussy willows to help out. The crickets were trilling away in fine spirits, while the sparrows chirped a jazzy backbeat. Someone had drilled a hole in the rain barrel, and Beetle was serving up the bubbly water. Barnyard da Dog wagged them through the gate. Cauliflower and Carrot strolled on in, smiling this way and that. And who might they be, whispered Carnation to an older tulip, who peered over her glasses and wrinkled her nose. It appears that some vegetables have decided to crash our party. Carnation, Carnation was so shaken, she ruffled her feathers. Petals. Oh my, she exclaimed, raw vegetables. How dreadfully crude. 
I'm a bit tongue-tied today. What are they doing here anyway? Do they have an invitation? Asked Rose. Pretty plain looking pair, don't you agree, my love? Lavender bowed stiffly to his lady Rose and led her onto the dance floor. She was still young and glowing. We ought to throw them out. The idea of per some perfectly strange vegetables showing up at our ball just like that. Who ever heard of such a thing? Larkspur bristled furiously. Miserable groundlings, wretched undergrowth. You're absolutely right. They're nothing but tedious soup wallowers. Marigold wilted with disgust. Cauliflower heard the mumbling and grumbling. He saw that the roses were quivering and the carnations were shivering, all in a huff. Pansy even got the hiccups. Something tells me they don't like us, Cauliflower said to Carrot. That's a pity because their music is so beautiful, Carrot sighed dreamily. Then she thought a moment. Have we done something to them? she asked Cauliflower. No, have they done something to us? he asked back. No, replied Carrot. In that case, there's no reason for anyone to be angry, declared Cauliflower, relieved. He smoothed out his feather and bowed to Carrot. May I be so bold, my lady? he asked. Would you care to dance? Carrot was delighted. After all, the night was balmy, the light was soft, and the lightning bugs were in fine spirits. The moon rolled up into the sky and stars came peeking out full of curiosity. Carrot winked through her mask at Cauliflower and held out a tender leaf. It would be my pleasure. They mingled among the dancers. Elegant flocks shrank away from them, and they stepped on Clematis's toes. If at least they were reeds, weeds groaned Wisteria. After all, weeds bloom almost like we... She stopped in mid-sentence. Cauliflower had wrapped his arms around Carrot's waist and was dancing a snazzy snap bean rumba. Then he held her through a breezy cucumber tango, and finally the two vegetables frisked out a spicy chiller, chili pepper cha cha cha. Carrot lost her breath, but bravely followed her partner and didn't once lose her footing. They were a beautiful sight, and the flowers couldn't help but applaud. After that, Pussy Willow ventured to approach Carrot, and Cauliflower asked Marigold to join him in for a charming waltz. Next, he danced a gallop with Salvia and a jaunty polka, polka with Lily. It turned out to be a grand evening. Everyone got to know Carrot and Cauliflower, and they all learned that they could get along splendidly. We'll have you over to our vegetable bunch, promised Cauliflower in part, part, parting. And you'll be sure to come to our next ball, won't you? Asked Lavender eagerly. He was somewhat taken by Carrot. The two vegetables tiptoed back home. They were very happy and very tired and didn't want to wake anybody up. Just as Cauliflower was falling asleep, he whispered, Who would have thought it? I have to write down everything that happened tonight, so I will never forget. I will draw some pictures for you, Carrot whispered back. That way we'll have a book. 
He closed her, her eyes closed, and someday we'll read it out loud to our grandchildren. And soon she was gently snoring. Thank you for joining us for The Flower Ball by Sigrid Laub and Silk Leffler. We'll hope to see you again very soon.